Perception, year one, year two, welcome to story time with me, Mr. A, and uh, we're going to finish off The uh, Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham and uh, find out what chapter three, The Wild Wood, is all about. I'm guessing it's about a wood, um, probably a wild one. Um, okay, as usual, um, I'll try and put some images in the top corner by the miracle of technology so you can see what's going on. Uh, and here we go. Mole was still sharing rats home as summer passed into autumn and winter came along. One day, while Rat dozed in front of the fire, Mole decided to set off by himself to visit Badger at his home in the Wild Wood. Rat had warned Mole many times about the Wild Wood and its dangers. Keep away from there, he always said. It can't be all that bad a place, thought Mole. After all, dear old Badger lives there, and he's a really good chap, so I'm told. I'm sure I'll be quite safe. With that, Mole put on his warmest clothes and set off on his journey. The wild wood was dark and gloomy. The wind whispered strange noises, and creatures Mole could not see were running all around him. Little beady eyes seemed to be watching him through the dark bushes and the thick undergrowth. Mole was starting to feel very afraid. In a panic, he ran this way and that. He tripped and fell into a hole at the foot of a beech tree. Trembling with fright and cold, Mole dug down into a bed of warm leaves. Back at home, Rat was worried when he woke up to find Mole had gone out on his own. He could see footprints from his front door leading up the bank and on towards the wild wood. Rat put on some warm clothes, he knew about the dangers of the wild wood, and he pushed a pair of pistols into his belt and picked up a heavy walking stick. Then he set off to search for his dear friend Mole. I did tell Mole never to go into the wild wood on his own, said Rat. He doesn't know his way around some of the nasty folk who live there. I do hope he doesn't come to any harm before I find him. Inside the wild wood, Rat searched for many hours. Where are you, Mole? he called time and time again. Don't be afraid, it's old Ratty. I've come to take you home. Rat called Mole's name again and again. Each time there was no reply. Mole! Rat called out at the top of his voice. Can you hear me, Mole? Then Rat heard a small voice call out. I'm over here. Over where? called back Rat. Here, down a hole at the bottom of this tree, replied Mole. Rat soon found Mole and let himself down into the hole to see if his friend was safe and sound and hadn't hurt himself when falling down. The two friends were happy to be together. It was so warm and cosy on the bed of old leaves at the bottom of the hole that they decided to rest there for a while and they soon fell fast asleep. By the time Rat and Mole woke up and climbed out of their hole, heavy snow had fallen. Everything in the wood was covered with a thick white blanket. Rat's footprints into the wood were hidden by the snow. He had hoped to follow them to guide them out of the wood. Also, the covering of thick snow made it impossible to recognise any trees or bushes or other such landmarks. Rat and Mole had no idea where they were and had no way of telling. They were completely lost. Rat walked this way and that, Mole followed and then cried out in pain. He had tripped over what looked like a metal foot scraper scrape sticking up through the snow and had hurt his leg quite badly. Mole helped Rat to scoop away more snow from around the foot scraper and found a doormat. Soon they uncovered a door, set back in a mound of snow-covered earth. There was a bell pull and a brass plate upon which were the words, Mr. Badger. Hurrah! cried Mole. We found out where Mr. Badger lives after all. I hope it's not too late to call him. Mole jumped up to reach the bell pull and the bell clanged. Rat banged the door with his stick, calling out, Badger, are you at home? Please open up, it's your friend Rat. My friend Mole is with me and he so wants to meet you. What's more, we've lost our way home. Rat and Mole heard footsteps from the other side of the door. Then came the sound of chains rattling and locks being turned. Finally, the door opened and a surprised Badger appeared, lighting his way with a candle. Badger was wearing his dressing gown and old slippers. Rat guessed he must have been on his way to bed, as by now it was getting very late in the day. Badger cleaned the scratches on Mole's leg and covered them, uh, covered them with sticking plaster. He made them both put on spare dressing gowns and slippers while their clothes were hung up to dry. Badger served them a wonderful supper Afterwards, they sat with him in front of the warm kitchen fire. 
They told him about their day's adventure, which had begun with Mole setting out by himself to look for Badger's home in the wild wood. Well, it's time we were all in bed, Badger told them. The weather is bad and it's much too late for you to find your way home now. Badger insisted they stayed the night and showed them to his spare bedroom. It was really a storeroom for his apples, turnips, potatoes, bags full of nuts and jars of honey. There was a space, though, for two small beds, which Rat and Mole tumbled into and enjoyed a good night's sleep. And that's the end. That was The Wind in the Willows. Thank you very much for watching and listening, and uh, I'll be back again next week with another story. Have a great weekend, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.